Hey, grade sixes, we're going to be talking about classifying figures. And we're talking about 2D figures that you find in everyday life around you and everything else. And we're going to start off with triangles, the three sided shapes. Well, you've got some uh, triangles up here. And we've got the, the different lengths of the sides. And if we look at the sides, You'll notice that uh, this side is six centimeters, and this side over here is six centimeters, and in fact, this side is six centimeters as well. So we've got equal sides all around this triangle. And if we look at the angles, if we take our protractor and, and look at those, we find that every angle is also equal. And because everything is equal in this triangle, it is known as an equilateral triangle. And to describe it, all sides and angles are equal. What about this one over here? Well, if we measure our sides, then we'll end up with, we've got four centimeters on that side, four centimeters on this side. Oh, and there's five on this side. So only two sides are equal. If we take our protractor and we measure our angles, we've got two of them at 45. But this symbol here, this little square in the corner automatically means that it's a 90 degree angle. And with that in place, we've got two angles that are equal and two sides that are equal. We call that kind of triangle an isosceles triangle. And to describe it, two sides and two angles are equal. Well, what about our third one over here, the third type? If we measure our sides and we get those all in there, we find out that all three sides have a different length. We've got three at the bottom, four going up, and five on the hypotenuse, which is the largest side of a triangle. And if we measure our angles, we find there that all angles are different as well. And if you've got a triangle with all the angles and all the sides that are different, we call that a scalene triangle. And the description, once again, are no sides or angles are equal. Well, when we talk about a triangle, we also talk about identifying a triangle. And because we've got different points or vertices up here, we can label those vertices. And usually, we label them with capitals. So this would be triangle capital A, B, C. And that would be identified with a simple triangle ABC. Or you could call it ACB, or you could call it CBA. As long as the letters are done in order, uh, then this triangle would be named that way. Now you can also name the sides. And usually the sides are named with the small letters. And notice that we also are using the ABC, but the little a is opposite the angle A. And the little c is opposite the angle c. And the little b is opposite the angle b. So we can, if we're referring to a side, we can say that this is side A, or this is side B, or this is side C. And this is recognized, as I said, by a small letter. So that's about triangles. Let's go on to something different. Polygon is made up of two parts of the word. Poly means many, or more than two, and gone are sides. And so polygon, this is more than a two-sided figure. And so we've got many different polygons here. And I've classed them as regular and irregular. Well, what is a regular shape? A regular shape is defined as all angles and sides are equal. So if we take a look at this first side, if we were to put a protractor at every angle here, notice they're all identical. If we were to take a ruler and measure every length, they're all identical. So this becomes known as a regular polygon. And because it has six sides, it's known as a regular hexagon because hexagon is the term for six-sided figure. Now what about this side, or this object? It's got six sides as well, but are all the angles exactly equal? No. Are all the sides exactly equal? No. So it is called an irregular hexagon. Let's take a look at this one. 
One, two, three, four, five sides. Uh, are they all exactly the same angle? No. Are they all the same size? No. Then we, cl then we class this as an irregular pentagon because it's five sides, five-sided object, pentagon. This one here, if we measure all the interior angles, are they the same? Yes, they are. We take a ruler, we measure the sides. They're all identical. This becomes known as a regular pentagon. So with the top objects, we know that a regular pentagon is all angles and sides are equal. And with an irregular pentagon, all angles and sides are not equal. So taking a look at this quickly, what would you say this is right off the bat? You should be able to re guess irregular. And then we just count the sides, and we find that there are four, so this is a quadrilateral. Quad refers to four. That's why we drive quad. So here we've got a, a square, okay, which is a particular name for a regular quadrilateral. All the sides are equal, and all the angles are equal. So this would be a regular quadrilateral. What about this? We've got an eight-sided object. Are all of the lengths the same? Yes. Are all the angles the same? They look like it. So this would be a regular, and what's an eight-sided object called? Octagon. Good. So a regular octagon. Here's another eight-sided object, but obviously the angles are not the same. So this is a re irregular octagon. Great. So the difference between a regular object and an irregular object just depends on whether the angles and sides are equal. Let's go on to a new term called concave and convex. Now concave has the word cave in it. And I like to uh, identify that cave because a concave object is a polygon with at least one reflex angle. And if it has a reflex angle, you can see if we look at this here, it's greater than 180 degrees. And so this provides a way in. So it's sort of a cave into the object, sort of like the bat cave or something. You've got an entrance into it. And that way, concave means that uh, the object has an entrance that sort of leads into it. If you look at this object, there's no way in. There's no interior uh, way into this object. So we call this a convex shape. And the definition of a convex says a polygon where all angles are less than 180. But to, because to create a cave like this object would have, you have to have that reflex angle of greater than 180 degrees. So there's concave. What would this be? No entrance in, so it is convex. Do you see an entrance in this one? Yes siree, there's the cave there. So that is concave. Any entrance into this one? Nope, it's convex. What about this one? Any entrance in? Nope, convex. Any entrance in this one? Yes, there are two entrances. You can sort of get inside this object through here, or you can get in through the object through here. So it is indeed concave. So the difference between concave and convex, one gives you a cave to get into the object, the other does not. Let's look at the next thing, congruent and similar shapes. So I've got a bunch of shapes here. And let's take uh, this one. Can we find another object that looks just like this one? Well. This one down here looks pretty close. So if we put it up over top, and we're going to have to turn it a bit. And if we fit it, well, look at that. It fits exactly right over top. So if an object fits over top of another object, if it's exactly the same size and the same shape, we call it a congruent object. These objects are congruent. And so congruent means that the objects have the same size and shape. In other words, a congruent shape is something that is identical. Whereas a similar object, they are the same shape, but not the same size. So let's take a look at this object here and this object. So these two are similar. 
And if we twist it a little bit, okay, they certainly look like they're, in fact, yes, it's the same angle. It is the same shape, but they're different sizes. And so because it's a different size, we call it these objects are similar. They have the same angles on the inside, but they're a different size. And so therefore the objects are classed as similar as opposed to congruent where they're exactly the same. What about this object? Okay, here's one down here. We put these up. What do we think they are? Take your guess. Are they congruent or are they similar? Let's turn it and find out. And see what happens. Ah. They are congruent. They fit right on top of each other. And so we would name these as congruent objects. What about the last two? We put it up here. Now, are they congruent? No, they're certainly not the same size. It doesn't matter how we twist it. They're not going to go over top of each other. Um, well, are they the same shape? Well, no, they're not even the same shape. It doesn't matter what we do with it. So, in fact, we say that these two objects are neither congruent nor similar. So you get the difference between congruent and similar? Congruent means identical. Similar means they are very much the same, but different, different, just a different size. Let's go on to some special quadrilateral names. And this is the last thing we're going to be working on together. So with this object here, these are all quadrilaterals, all four-sided shapes. What would this one be called? You can see that there's two lines here. That means that these two lines, these two line segments are absolutely parallel. In fact, if they were true lines and they went on forever in both directions, they would never touch. So what is a quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides. So we can describe that. A quadrilateral, one pair of sides is parallel. What do we call it? Do you know? It's called a trapezoid. Well, if you didn't know that before, maybe it's time to have a song about it so you'll re remember forever. Did you make your trapezoid up in the air? <laughs> well, let's take a look at our next object here. Okay, with this one, we see that we have opposite sides are parallel. So we've got the one line going this way, the one line going this way, they're parallel. And we've got the opposite sides on this side, they are parallel as well. Notice by the arrows. Also, they are the same length. So this one has one dash, this one has one dash. That means that it's the same length. This one has two dashes. This has two dashes. So what is a quadrilateral that has opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are equal length? That's our description. What is it called? Take your guess. If you guessed a parallelogram, you got it right. The last object that we're going to be doing has opposite sides are parallel opposite sides of the same length and actually all the sides are exactly the same length. So look at our description here. A quadrilateral all sides are equal and two pairs of parallel sides. So what would we call that one? Well, it's an advancement on the parallelogram. It's called a rhombus. So in our classifying figures, we've looked at triangles, including the different types of triangles and how to identify them. We've looked at regular and irregular polygons, concave, convex shapes, congruent, similar objects, special quadrilaterals, including trapezoid, parallelogram, and rhombus. Enjoy!